In the month of February, I've made quick tutorials on edits such as head wires, night vision, glowing cache, and fake tears. I hope you will find it useful. And if you want to watch these quick tutorials each week before I release it on YouTube as a compilation like this one, follow me on social media. This week's quick Photoshop tutorial is head wires. Inspired by this thumbnail, I'll show you how to do a similar head wire effect. Once you have your wire or cable or whatever placed on your subject, you'll want to add a shadow to make it realistic. In this example, I'll have two shadows. The first one is a direct contact shadow, which I'll create with a negative exposure adjustment layer. While using a soft brush with a low flow, I'll slightly paint over the edges of the connector that's directly touching the skin. This may seem very subtle, but it's necessary in the grand scheme of things. To add the second shadow, I'll duplicate the previous exposure adjustment layer and then approximately paint over the area where the shadow is supposed to be. In this case, I didn't really bother getting the right shadow direction because our subject and cable are lit differently, and this is a topic for another video. Anyway, I'll just paint a shadow that matches the lighting of the cable, which should be good enough for demonstration purposes. Once I have this shadow area painted roughly, I'll mask out the sharp edges which will make the shadow look very, very soft. Something like this should be enough. Now, if we take a closer look at this inspiration thumbnail, there are clearly some cracks in the skin visible. I think this looks very cool, so to add something like this to your own edit, all that's required is a crack texture, which you can easily find on the internet. And when you have it placed in desired spot, change it to correct blend mode and on an inverted layer mask, just paint around this area. If you need to make it pop more, just create a curves adjustment layer and increase the visibility like this. And to go one step further, you can always create red colored layer and again with a low flow brush, paint around the connector, cable or wire and on these skin cracks. This makes it look much better in my opinion. To blend the connector more with our subject, I'll just add some shadow around the bottom area and also one S curve to increase the contrast. And for the end, let's imagine we want to get rid of this original cable and then draw a custom one that's colorful like in the inspiration thumbnail. Fortunately, all we need for this is an empty layer, a brush set to 100% flow and smoothing at around 20%. And once that's in place, you can draw whatever you want. To edit the newly created layer, open the blending options and play around with the settings. I'll change the color to red and then play with the sliders inside bevel and emboss effect. Additionally, you can add glow or shadow to it or anything else that might look cool for you. In this week's quick Photoshop tutorial, I'll show you how to achieve the night vision effect. I've always wanted to do a quick layer-by-layer -layer breakdown of this thumbnail, but it's so simple that I never found a good excuse to showcase it, until today. So, welcome inside my Photoshop project file. This thumbnail consists of about 20 layers in total, so to break it all down, I'll start with the initial thumbnail concept where we wanted to make the scene look like it was lit by a torch, which usually emits warm yellow light. You can see I use a bunch of stock textures blended together for the background, and then another bunch of adjustment layers to make it look darker. This could have been done with maybe one or two layers, but when I was making this thumbnail, I experimented with some other directions, so I ended up with some layers that may seem unnecessary. Anyway, then I added the photo of Josh, which initially looked like this, but since we wanted to do the torch theme, I had to relight it. Then, as you can see, I added the shadow on the wall and some adjustment layers to fix the hair cut out. Once I added the final overlay layer and text on the right side, I merged everything together and applied camera raw filter to get the finished product of the first concept. This ended up looking pretty good, but it wasn't the right representation of the video. So to make it fit the overall video vibe, we just needed to turn it into a night vision scene. And this was achieved easily with a single hue and saturation adjustment layer. I quickly added the eyes glow and then inside the hue and saturation layer, I made sure to check the colorize box. After this, I played with the first two sliders to get the right night vision look. And the neat thing about this approach is that I can always easily change the color. For example, if this video had some scary elements, this thumbnail dominated by red color would have been a great choice for A-B testing. This week's editing inspiration is Glowing Cache. In this Airac thumbnail, we can clearly see the cache with glow, and it has these horizontal lines that suggest it's a virtual money. So let's recreate this effect from scratch. Here I have this image imported from the Thumbnails Plus Assets Pack, with all the adjustment layers applied to it, and I'm going to use it for this example. The main thing when you're making this effect is that you want to have a separate layer of the cache, which I have right here. So to start off, make sure the cache layer is a smart object, and then duplicate it. With the duplicate layer selected, go to Filter, Blur, and click on Gaussian Blur. 
As a starting point, radius of 10 pixels will be enough. Click OK, and then change the blend mode of the layer from normal to screen. And after that, reduce the opacity to 30%. Once this is done, duplicate that layer and open the Gaussian blur settings again. Change the radius pixel value from 10 to 50 and close the window. Duplicate the layer again and change the blur value from 50 to 100 this time. When this is done, select all cache layers and group them together. Next step of the edit is adding the horizontal lines which you can easily create from scratch. In this case I'm using this one from internet but I prefer if the lines were closer together. With transform tool I'll squish them together and then duplicate and merge it into a single smart object. Finally, to get rid of the white areas and keep only the lines, change the blend mode of the layer to any of the darkening blend modes. In this case, I'll choose darken. I will also reduce the opacity to 20% and make sure it's clipped to the group below. Now, to finally give it some color, create a color balance adjustment layer. I'll just duplicate this one from the original asset and modify the colors a tiny bit. Make sure the adjustment layer is clipped to the group below and modify the sliders inside shadows, midtones, and highlights to match your desired look. In my case, I'll just boost the green colors in all three of them. In case your cache element is too bright like mine is here, go select the starting cache layer and create a curves adjustment layer on top of it. Make sure to clip it to the layer and drag the slider from the middle down. This will reduce the overall brightness of the cache. And as a finishing touch, create a new layer with the blend mode screen. Inside the color picker for the foreground color, Choose a shade of dark green. And then the soft brush tool, click on the cache areas where you want to add more glow. In this quick video, I'll show you three different ways on how to add fake tears to your subject. The first one is by far the simplest. Go on the internet and find a transparent image of a tear like this and place it on your subject. Change the blend mode to linear dodge and if necessary, create a curves adjustment layer to reduce the intensity. For the second one, you should have an actual photo of someone crying. This is the example in my case and I'm gonna go ahead and make a rough selection of the tier with the lasso selection tool. When the selection is active, cut it out by pressing Ctrl or Command J on your keyboard. After that, I'll place the tier in the desired position. With both layers selected, I'll go to edit, auto blend layers, Choose Stack Images, and then let the Photoshop do its magic. The third way to create a fake tear adds the most flexibility. Create a new empty layer and with brush tool, draw the shape of a tear. Then, reduce the fill from 100% to zero, and open the blending options. Apply the drop shadow, and for the color use the color picker, and click on the area with the actual shadows in the original image. Next step is to apply bevel and emboss and make sure the shadow mode is at 0% opacity and the highlight mode is at 100%. You can play with these settings to get a custom look of a tier, but in this instance here, I'll choose direction down and I'll change the size and soften sliders to these values. I'll go back to layer and with lower brush flow, I'll draw the path of the tier. To make it more realistic on an empty new layer with a low flow brush and white color selected, I'll subtly paint over the tier path, which will create these additional highlights and reflections. And in case you might find it useful, I created this quick Photoshop action that automatically creates the layers for fake tears and its highlights. All you have to do is pick the correct shadow color, eventually change the highlights direction, and then simply draw the tears on your subject the way you want it. It's as simple as that. And if you want to download this fake tears action for free, go to thumbnails 101 assets and scroll down until you see this section.